Hi there, my name is Kathy Barker from Software Solutions and you're watching one of a number of videos I've created regarding Microsoft Outlook. Now what we're in the throes of at the moment is looking at Outlook and creating emails and the sorts of tricks that you've got with creating emails. I've got a new email open in front of me and we were just looking at follow-up and signatures in an earlier email. What I want to do now is just um, draw attention to these two buttons here. If you send an email, typically the um, importance or the priority is set to normal. But if you want to indicate that this is an extremely important message, you can click this button. And if you want to indicate that it's not an important message, you can click this button. Um, that will appear at the other end in their inbox with either an exclamation mark indicating visually that this is an important message or with a blue down arrow. I'm just going to leave my... Um, priority or importance at normal rather than high or low. Now the other thing I want to show you is just zooming. When I am creating an email or when I'm reading an email, sometimes I can't see what someone has sent me. Maybe they've sent me a picture or a map and they said, oh look, you need to go here and I can't see it. Hold the control key, move your mouse wheel forward and you will zoom into an email. So if you ever struggle to see what's going on, you can actually zoom backwards and zoom out and zoom forward just by holding your control key and moving the wheel on your mouse. There is under format text also a zoom button here uh, where you can set it to a certain percentage, but I find holding the control key and wheeling forward or backwards is really, really useful. Now the sorts of things that you can insert into an email, let's go to the insert tab and I'm just clicked in the message area of my email. In an earlier video we talked about attaching files and attaching um, items. We even looked at signatures. What I want to do now is actually look at um, calendar. Sometimes people will ask me, have you got any free time next week? So I'll go to calendar and I'll say to them, I don't want to show them today, I want to show them specific dates. And those specific dates are next week from the 30th, maybe to the um, 3rd. Now, I just want to show them availability only, whether I'm free or busy, but you do have the option of giving them limited details or even full details. But I'm going to stay with availability only. And I only want to show them time within my working hours. Um, so I'm going to tick that option there and OK. It creates a calendar and basically says next week I'm busy. Um, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I have a little bit of time free between 7 and 8 on Tuesday, a little bit of free time on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday between 7 and 8.30 and between 1 and 7. So it gives them a calendar that they can then say, oh look, I see that you're free at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Could we have a, a five-minute team session um, remotely? So it's that sort of thing that you can do. And I will undo that to take that away. It also attaches an internet calendar um, attachment as well, which I can then remove. Okay, what else can we insert? We can also insert pictures. We don't necessarily want to attach pictures. We want to embed them in an email. I can choose insert and pictures, and I have the choice of this device. So if I've taken a photo, then I would choose this device and go and choose that photo from my computer or whatever device I had connected. But I'm just going to choose online pictures for this particular demonstration. I might search for a particular picture. I might just go to, um, not Apple, let me go back. Let me go to animals. And here is a cute little monkey. I'm going to choose him and insert. Okay, now when I bring in a picture, this particular picture is actually brought in too. So first of all, at the bottom here is a little bit of a statement saying that this is a Creative Commons um, picture, which means the author is unknown, and I can use this picture in my business documents without fear of copyright reprisals, but I cannot on sell the picture because I do not own the picture. Now I want to get rid of the statement, so I click on the words, but then I just lift my mouse up and click on the edge of the frame that surrounds those words. And then I press delete to get rid of those words. Now here I can see that the picture is two monkeys and I really only want one monkey. 
Whenever you click on a picture, you acquire a picture format tab in your ribbon. If you click away from the picture, it disappears. If you click on the picture, it reappears. If you want to format your picture in any way, shape or form, you have to click on the picture and go for the picture format tab. Now, one of the things you can do is you can crop. That's this button here. And to crop just like your phone is to take off part of the picture. So I'm going to crop this picture, drag this left edge towards the middle because I want to get rid of the monkey on the left hand side. And I want just this cute little fella here. And I'll click on crop to complete that. What you then might want to do is you might then want to um, resize the picture. One way is to do it visually, and that's to just drag the bottom right corner into the center, or out. That way you don't distort the picture because you're adjusting the height and the width at the same time by dragging the corner. Or, on the picture format tab towards the right hand side, you might want to set the width of the picture to 5 centimeters. So I just type 5 and press enter, and so I've made that picture 5 centimeters. So decide on the size of your picture, either specifically or visually. As far as getting the picture to sit with text, let me just add some text in here. Alright, if I want this picture to sit inside this text, as soon as I drag the picture, it's not very friendly or cooperative. So what we have to do is hit this text wrap or layout options button here. The layout options gives us various forms of text wrapping. And if I was to go square, then the text will squarely, as I move this picture by its middle, this, the text will squarely go around the picture and I can move the picture quite easily up or down and the text squarely goes around it. So that is very important, is the wrap text options that appear in the layout button. If I choose top and bottom, then the text goes to the top and bottom. I can still move the picture easily because I've set the wrap text. And I can move it over here and move it over here. But if I go for, um, yeah, I'd probably just go for square and top and bottom. You don't want it sitting... Um, in front of the text or behind the text. I could put it behind, it looks like that. Or if I put it in front, then I block all the words. And tight is the same as square because it's a square picture. Um, I can fix the picture on the page so it doesn't move when I move the text just by choosing that option there. But I think I'm just going to go for square and click away. So you've got the text wrapping options, which are really important. The text wrapping allows you to move the picture easily. Now the other thing that we often include in emails are screen dumps. What you can do, for example, maybe I bring up another program. Uh, let's say I bring up Excel. And let me just bring that into view because it's going to come up on this screen. And let's say I grab a certain file. Uh, what have I got here? Let's just choose Excel 1. Okay. Let's say I want to take a copy of the screen. Then I would just press um, Alt Print Screen. Alt Print Screen, the two keys on your keyboard, means that you're just taking that screen, not the whole screen, just that screen. And then if I went to an email and I went paste, Control V, then it pastes the entire screen into that email. So Alt Print Screen's a really handy thing. But what I like more so is the snipping tool or snip and sketch. I'm going to delete this picture. There's the ability to bring up the application snipping tool, but there's also the ability to just press a key combination. So, for example, if I go back to Excel and let's say I want to just put just this data, not all the other stuff around the outside, I'm going to hold the Windows logo key. Windows logo shift S makes the screen goes dim. Then what I do with my mouse is I drag around what I want to take a copy of. Then what I do is I go to the email and I simply press paste, control V. And that will paste just what I snipped into that particular email. Let's do that again. 
maybe I've got another separate sheet, maybe uh, CSC. I want to put this into an email. So Windows Shift S, drag around it, go to the email and click and press Control V. And that just puts that straight into an email. But what if I'm wanting to highlight certain records or cross out certain records? Then I need to bring up the app. So let me just delete that and delete that. I'm going to search for snip. And there's my snipping tool. If I click my snipping tool, then this app, let me bring it into view, comes up. Now, what I can do is I can bring up the Excel file again, bring up the Snipping Tool app, go new, the screen goes dim. Oh, this is not the one I wanted to do a snip of, so I'm going to press Escape. Let's go over here, Clients, let's go to Snipping Tool, and let's go new. So now I take a snip of what I want. But the reason I bought the app app is because I want to make some changes to it. Now the first thing I want to do is say that you can go control wheel forward and control wheel backwards to zoom in and zoom out if you need to make that bigger. And I might maximize this and just zoom in. So you can zoom in. Oops, didn't want that. Where's my rubber? And rub that out. You can wheel up, wheel down, um, and zoom in. Okay, now to highlight certain things, I'm going to get my ruler. And I'm going to lift this up, and I want to highlight Ian. So then I get a highlighter pen. I can choose the color of my highlighter pen. I can even choose the thickness of my highlighter pen. But I'm just going to put it back to yellow and just make it a normal thickness, like that. Uh, maybe, no, about there. Now what I do is just drag across my ruler and it automatically highlights straight. If I then have to highlight Vanessa, bring it down and drag across Vanessa. You don't have to have a straight hand, you just use the ruler. And then Robin is the next person I wanna highlight. If I need to rotate my ruler, just move your mouse wheel forward or backwards and you're rotating your ruler. Now let's say I want to cross out Carl because Carl's left us now. So I'm going to go for a pen and a red pen and I'm just dragging across my ruler to cross that one out and Joy's left as well so let's just cross out Joy as well. I turn off my ruler and the ruler's gone. There is also a protractor um, in the drop down here, if you want to draw degrees, 167 degrees, move the protractor out of the way, move my wheel, wheel backwards or forwards to increase or decrease my protractor, and if I want to get rid of that, I can just go to my eraser and drag over the arc I created, and if I want to turn off the protractor, just click it again and turn it off. So I wanted you to show, I wanted to show you that there's a ruler, there's a protractor, there's highlighters, there's pens, and there's erasers. And you can really do quite a lot with the Snipping Tool app. Now that I've done that, I take a copy of it, though I could save it, but I'm just going to take a copy of it. I'm going to go to my email and I'm going to paste it, Control V. And so there is my Snipping Tool. So press Windows Shift S when you just want to take a copy of something and just immediately go paste. You don't even have to go to the app and copy it. You just paste it. But if you want to make some changes like using highlighters and pens and stuff, then you want to open up the app and you want to actually create a snip. Come back for the next videos and I'll show you some massive time savers with creating new emails. See you soon.